Hello, and welcome to this Tips and Tricks video where I'll be talking about how to apply a time and temperature dependent heat load in ANSYS Mechanical. So let's start by going over my sample model here. We have a one cubic meter cube and I'm applying a temperature load to it. So imposing a 20 degrees Celsius temperature on the outer surface of the cube. And then I'm going to be applying a heat generation to the cube itself. So in this part of the sample model, I only have a time dependent heat generation. This is something you can do in, a, in the GUI. If I'm going to add a temperature dependence as well, that's going to have to use a command snippet. So let's start with just the time dependent. I've got two load steps here. First one ending at one second, second one ends at two seconds. Start with a zero internal heat generation that goes up to 1,000 watts per cubic meter and then 4,000 watts per cubic meter. So if I look at my heat reaction, since this is a one cubic meter cube, I should end up with 1,000 watts for the first load step and 4,000 for the second. So I can take a look at this. You can see my temperature on the inside of the cube increases as you'd expect with an internal heat generation here. I get up to a little under 24 degrees Celsius. And if I look at the reaction probe, at one second, it's minus 1000 watts, meaning that heat is leaving the system. And at two seconds, it's minus 4000 watts. So this is what we'd expect here. Now, let's say we wanna add a temperature dependence to this. And let's say we want something like this table on the right. So we've got time here and temperature here and then internal heat generation here. So at zero seconds, no heat generation. At one second, we've got a thousand watts of heat generation from zero to 22 degrees Celsius and 5,000 watts uh, per cubic meter from 24 to 99 degrees Celsius. Then at two seconds, that increases to 4,000 watts per cubic meter on our lower temperature range and 9,000 watts per cubic meter on our higher temperature range. So if we look back at our temperatures here, this has the same, from zero to 22, this has the same heat generation that we applied before. So we can expect it to go from this lower temperature range into this higher temperature range at about a second and a half, somewhere in there. Now it won't go to that higher temperature range throughout the body since the outer surface is gonna be maintained at 20 degrees Celsius throughout. So if I wanna apply a time and temperature dependent heat load like this, I'm gonna do that with a command object. And that's what we have here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to mention an array, specifically a table array called my heat gen. So that's gonna be a table which allows ANSYS APDL, the solver, to interpolate between different entries here. And I'm gonna have four rows and three columns here. And the different rows will correspond to temperature values, different temperature values, and the different columns will correspond to different time values. So just like this over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is define my different temperature values. Those are gonna be in the zeroth column. So I'm gonna have zero as my column index here and the first, second, third, and fourth row. So this little section right here. So we've got zero degrees, 22, 24, and 99. Then I'm gonna define my time values. These will be in the zeroth row. So zero, one, zero, two, and zero, three. So these entries right here. And that's gonna be zero, one, and two seconds. 
Then I'll fill in the internal heat generations at the different times. So we can see the heat generations at time zero are all zero. At time one, I've got a thousand watts per cubic meter on the lower temperature range and 5,000 on the higher temperature range. So that's this data right here. And then at time equals two, I've got 4,000 and 9,000. So that's this data right here. Then I'm doing a component select. So what this does is selects my name selection, which I've called heat gen. And it's selecting those elements and then applying the heat generation using the BFE command. And you can see I've got where I normally would have just a number if I were applying a constant load, I have my table name enclosed in percent signs. And that tells ANSYS that this is a table and it should be interpolating in order to imply the heat, apply the heat load. Then I just have an all select command to select everything since I had only selected some of the elements up here. All right, so that's the whole command object. Let's take a look at what the results look like for this. So if I look at my temperature, you can see this is higher than before. Uh, previously, I was a little under 24 degrees. Now it's almost 28 degrees at the hottest. And if I look at my reaction probe, you'll see that this looks a little different as well. If I select both of these reaction probes and create a chart, we can look at them together. And you can see for a while, these two are tracking together. And that's because I haven't exceeded that low temperature range from zero to 22 C. So if I look at my temperature, you can see I don't go over 22 Celsius until about 1.4 seconds. I just get over that. Looking at the reaction or looking at the chart here, you can see a little after 1.5 seconds, the difference is enough that I start getting a lot more heat reaction in my temperature and time dependent model than I get in the simply time dependent model. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for tuning in.